Chris, I have a question. Is it a podcast if we only record it once a year? I don't know. If a tree falls in the woods, <laughs> if a tree falls in the woods and no one is there, does it make a sound? Well, if it's jazz fest, there's definitely a sound and it's joyous. I love it. That's Absolutely. our, that, that's our answer. Great. <laughs> um, so the people have spoken and uh, we've gotten the gang back together, even if it's just to discuss the cubes. We'll see. Um, but welcome back to the annual tradition that is the Talking Threadheads uh, podcast cubes edition. We've got uh, we've literally gotten the band back together because everybody loves this so much, and we're really flattered by the um, by the the questions and people asking if we were going to do this again. So um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for making time to join us this evening. This was a difficult one to get on the schedule, so um, I won't blah blah much longer. I'll introduce everyone. If you've joined the podcast before, all of your friends are back. Um, we've got uh, Mark Rosenswag, who is probably considered one of the authorities of uh, Jazz Fest. Uh, he's uh, coming to us live from New Orleans. We have my buddy Russ Agdern coming to us from Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Jordan Hamawi, are you in New Jersey today? I am. All right, so Jordan is in the same state that I am in. We've got Jordan Hamawi in New Jersey. We have my frenemy, Chris Joseph. <laughs> we have my friend, Chris Joseph. He is also in the city of New Orleans and I am your um, reluctant host, uh, Nicole Snyder. I am also in the state of New Jersey. We're so excited to get into the cubes. And I think unless anybody has any comments to add, we should just roll right into it. Do any of you guys have anything you want to say before we talk about First Thursday? Oh, um, it's great to be here and uh, missing to missing um, my uh, my fellow Yid from across the pond, um, his lordship uh, Mark, who's, who is uh, is not making the journey because of the unfortunate confluence of the Jazz Fest with Passover. That is right. That is right. We could certainly use his recommendations. And I did not um, shake him down for his Mark Engel picks, uh, but I will do my best to represent them as his uh, protege. Uh, but yeah, I miss him as well. Um, all right, guys. So we're getting eight days of Jazz Fest this year, so we better get to work. Um, I think what we're going to do is just kind of do what we did last year and really get into what we're looking forward to, what the, the conflicts are, where the FOMs are found. Um, and I've already, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go in hot on first Thursday. So I'll leave it, I'll leave it up to you guys. What, what's, what's jumping out to you? This was my hardest day, ironically. It was a surprisingly <laughs> hard one, right? Right. The first Thursday is usually you ease in. It's nothing too special. It's just kind of okay. This Thursday is impossible for me. Um, I I mean, first of all, my kids are coming um, who are now 21 and 23. Um, and so, you know, you're trying to share everything with them um, that they used to see when they were little. Um, but right off the bat, three bands, Pinman, Iceman Special, and David and Rosalind um, in a kid's tent. Um, Ten Men is at eleven fifteen at Blues Ten, and and uh, Iceman Specials at the festival stage at eleven twenty. Um, the weird one here is David and Rosalind for most people, and but they're one of the reasons I fell in love with New Orleans when I first came to New Orleans. They're both having different, um, they're in different stages of kind of Alzheimer's right now, but I really do want to pay my respects to them because you know they're just the soul of New Orleans in some ways to me. Um, so I'll stop by there for at least a song, try to make my kids come, and then split the set between Tim Men and Iceman Special. Um, and that's the first slot that is just impossible for me. Can I can uh, I ask you a question? Yeah. For, for some first time jazz festers who may not know, tell us more about the Iceman Special. Iceman Special is like a psychedelic rock band that is best seen at two a.m. in uh, a club somewhere with some kind of light show. But we'll see how they do at 11.20 on the festival stage and, the, and hopefully the blaring sunlight. Um, it's, it's some singing, mostly guitars, but 
you know, if you like kind of hard psychedelic rock, it's the place you want to be uh, for that first set. Thank you. I'll jump in since uh, since you mentioned the kind of the, the history and the heart and soul of, of New Orleans. Uh, there's a set on the Gentilly stage, which is the New Orleans classic re uh, recording review. Uh, and this is a, a set they've done the last few years, and it's always been in the blues tent. And these are a bunch of uh, you know old school uh, New Orleans R&B performers who used to used to all have their own sets. Um, and I think this year, because the Dixie Cups uh, are featured on the poster is is why they got promoted and moved out to the Gentilly stage. Uh, when, when the set was announced, uh, one of the performers was supposed to be uh, Frogman Henry. Fortunately, we lost him last week, so this is a reminder that you got to see these guys when you can. Uh, there was a, an ancestor unveiling for Frogman Henry that's been added uh, prior to that set, I think at 115 uh, out in the Congo Square field. Um, so, But we still have uh, the Dixie Cups or uh, those who are left from the Dixie Cups, uh, Wanda Rizan and now Carnival Time Johnson, as well as a tribute to Gene Knight, who we also lost not too long ago. So if these are bands you, you haven't seen before or you haven't seen in a while, uh, you know, see them when you can. Yeah. The other ones, let me just finish the swag. The other ones that I, I have can't, has, can't miss for the day are Makumba of Zimbabwe, who I've never seen, but I listened to and they sounded fantastic. It might just be that cultural exchange civilian thing that will just make you dance. Mm -hmm. um, Robert Finley in the Blues Tent, who seems to be like, I haven't seen him before either, but I'm definitely going to this time. And then Zima Funk is a force. A Cuban funk band. Um, so much energy. The only problem with Zima Funk is they're up against Chawa, who is the Mardi Gras Indian version of that. John Boutte, who is you know, how do you miss John Boutte and Billy Ayusu, who I love. Um, so that time slot around the 255 slot is just rough. And then I would probably finish with Ruthie Foster after maybe checking out mm -hmm. Double Whiskey, Karma and the Chill Killjoys, and maybe dancing one at Roy Rogers and the, and the Delta Rhythm Kings. You know what's great about doing this show with all of y'all is eventually, if I go last, almost everybody I'm going to say something about has something said <laughs> about them. So I can I can focus up, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some great picks here. And, you know, having, having you know, Swag and Jordan both name this, like, when you come here long enough, some of the time you spend going to Jazz Fest is going to be about trying to catch the folks you love like one last time or like maybe it's the last time they're performing like you know i remember um gosh um you know like just watching some of the like the elder mardi gras indians come out to do their final like to do what we knew we figured was their final set you know supporting you know seeing art as he was getting on, Art Neville, as he was getting on in years. So it's just something about like, it's more than just performance. It's also like giving back to the folks who and showing love and giving flowers to the folks who have given all of us so much over the years. Um, really. Um, so before I get too misty, um, Billy gets two sets on Thursday as the schedule stands right now. So that's one way you can get out of that predicament um for me one of the early slots there are a lot there were a couple of slots that were super packed the cory leday against the night crawlers against lewis ford and his flares cory leday is a great zydeco uh zydeco lead band leader lewis ford's an incredible clarinetist who can do r b and do classic new orleans feel and of course the grammy award-winning Nightcrawlers, what can you say? Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal outfit. Um, and the penultimate slot on Thursday, to me, is a kind of a mess. You've got Rock and Dopsy Jr., who's another incredible Zydeco musician. You've got Lakeisha Benjamin, who's a phenomenal alto sax player. You have the best former NFL player uh, turned accordion player uh, in Bruce Sun Pie Barnes. You have Chubby Carrier. You have Wendell Brunius and, um, and Kiki doing their Ella and Lewis tribute, and you have the Headhunters. 
this is all within an hour um, <laughs> or an hour and change. Um, it almost makes me glad that I'm not getting in until Saturday, almost. But, you know, without a question, I would be closing with Ruthie. Um, and I think if I had to pick one, I mean, I think like, yeah, God. I don't know. I don't think I can. <laughs> I do. I mean, listen, I do. I am, I am uh, perhaps unhealthily uh, in favor of getting to see the headhunters as much as I possibly can. You know, Kyle Roussel has slid in incredibly well into that piano chair in the last year plus. Um, and of course, you know, seeing seeing Big Chief Donald Harrison, uh, you know, with the with the dynamic duo on percussion, like it's just a hell of a set. Also, I love I love a Brooklyn boy gone to New Orleans. Any chance I could see Billy I is a good day. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a crazily packed Thursday. It's I mean, I wonder if it's just because second Thursday is Stones Day, so you don't have so they just put a lot of people in. Yeah. I my my highlight for Thursday is actually transferable across the weekend because um I'm really excited for the cultural exchange pavilion this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks great. Yeah. So if folks aren't familiar, uh each weekend many of the musicians that are featured in the Cultural Exchange Pavilion will also appear on other stages at different times and at multiple times across the days. So like, for example, this just jumps out at me, like Gregorio Uribe is going to be at, on the pavilion stage that afternoon. He will be at Fay Dodo earlier in the day. So you can, you know, you can kind of <coughs> spot some in around there, which is really nice to be able to do. Um, so when I highlight a pavilion act, you know, if you're interested in hearing, then also take a look and see where else they'll be playing to see if that time works a little bit better for you. Um, the Colombian music, I think, is going to be, of course, like, I think it's going to be really great for the Jazz Fest audience because it's not just all Cumbia and Shakira, right? Um, I don't think Shakira's going to be there, which is a bummer. Um, but, um, you know, I've been listening also and hearing a lot of different sounds, you know, a lot of rock, a lot of Afrobeat jazz brass band coming through in those Colombian artists um, sounds. So I think it's going to be really worth paying attention to. I want to highlight one group that jumps out to me on this day. And again, you can you can catch them throughout the weekend. Um, they are in the pavilion uh, at 335 that afternoon. They are and um, I'm going to do my best a group passion uh, chango. Uh, I hope that's, that's right. Perfect. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So um, I was doing some listening and reading about this group. Um, they are a cultural collective dedicated to preserving the traditional music of the southern coast of Colombia. Um, they released an album in 2020 named Beirahu, and you'll hear the voice of a man on there named Javier and Snyder, S. Snyder, not Nicole Snyder, S. Snyder. Um, and he was murdered in the violence that plagues Colombia. Um, the actors that murdered him uh, thought he was filming them when he was in fact just taking a video call outside a club. Um, he was only 24 years old and he was really passionate about preserving the music of, of his area. So this group is a group that has deep roots and, and a tragic story, um, you know, that unfortunately they have to carry with them so I would uh I like to point that out so that you can you know keep an eye out for them and you know maybe honor his memory by listening to him at Jazz Fest yeah Nicole I, I listened to all the Colombian bands this year like on Spotify or, or YouTube or whatever and I can't tell you how impressed I was with the slate of musicians that they brought usually I'm not a big fan of the cultural exchange pavilion I'll every year I'll find one thing that is amazing Mm -hmm. But usually I'll just feel like, yeah, that's all right. But it was, it's fantastic this year. And that's funny because I was, I, I have, I have definitely found a few from each year that I have, I have gotten into. Uh, and so it is not a surprise to me. I think, I think uh, Quinn has done a good job with these each year. And um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to which one I, I guess I will now, <laughs> given all that, I will now listen to the, them because yeah. Uh, excited to figure out which one will snatch me up walking Chris, by. what do you got so thursday is my comfort food day um <laughs> all bands that you guys have mentioned but i'm gonna i'm gonna bring them up again tin men 
you know, living here now, I can see 10 men weekly, but I can never get tired of, of listening and watching Alex McMurray in whatever band he's in. Yeah. In addition to being a great guitar player and a great songwriter, the guy is just funny. And it's the in-between song banter that that is just as good as the song. So that's number one. Number two of my three picks are the Nightcrawlers. I mean, yeah, Grammy winning, and they were also Grammy nominated for their most recent album. So I'm not going to miss them. And my last one, John Boutte, because John finds a way every year to get a well-deserved standing ovation. He's also crabby as hell when he's performing, and, th and that part's funny, too. He can't seem to get the sound right. They can't uh, get his mic right, they ever. They can, ever. They I cannot... have to pin John on this. John is, John is friendly and happy now. He is. Yeah, if John, if he's listening, I, I apologize, but he knows I'm I'm joking. And then I'm going to end up at, with Ruthie Foster, who yeah. Jordan already mentioned. So before we move to, to the next day, I, I want you each to pick not three foods you're going to eat that day, one food. One food. What's your pick? Crackles. I'll start. Crackles. <laughs> I'll start the day with a beer and a Crawford strudel in the gospel tent, or actually at the blues tent with a tin mint. All right, next. Who's next? Is it me? Go. Um, I will probably eat a crawfish enchilada. I'm Swag. gonna probably I'm gonna probably get the um the turducken, but without you know, not as a po' boy to see if they'll like throw some on a plate for me. They usually do that. Yeah. Swag, did you did you say something? Hey, it's yeah, a I'm looking right, forward to the burner crash out the gate. <laughs> it's a it's a new vendor, a, a local shop actually in uh, Lakeview that uh, will be the purveyor this year. So, looking forward to seeing uh, how they stack up against uh, what Fatty used to bring uh, for all those years. I'm going to go with the trout from Little Dizzy's. Oh, all nice. right. Are we at Nicole? Are we on to Friday? We are. We're going to do one going. for each of the eight days, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, guys friday well since we were since you ended a you, your your last piece was on a, a somewhat you know on a, a band that sounds great with a somewhat tragic story i want to give a shout out to the opening the festival stage tbc brass band um who have gone through their share of it over the last decade plus uh, and still keep manage to keep managing to to grow and get stronger and better with their performances. Um, I got to see them at an incredibly powerful throwdown. Uh, there is a there was a writer here that was was injured in a shooting and ended up passing away. Who was very much involved in the culture, um, and they did a set in her honor. And they did like a last minute second line for her that was one of the most powerful things I've ever been a part of. Um, Layla McCalla is a delight. She's a great singer and banjo player and hilarious. Um, I don't love that she's up against the young pinstripe brass bands, but I would probably actually go see her unless I'm feeling the energy. You got Zig. I think you've got a whole bunch of, uh, this day was actually Jordan harder for me than Thursday because there's just a couple of really big messes here. Um I'm going to throw out some ones that maybe aren't mentioned as often because I'm sure you guys are going to mention some of these other ones. Um, the McMains singing Mustangs, they're a high school gospel choir. They used to be my standard first opening set at the gospel tent on second Thursday. Um, and they're just always, they're always just wonderful to see, very powerful group. Um, I have no idea what Big Chief Donald Harrison is doing with his icons crew, but he is somebody that I would go see play scales um, or play on a phone book. I would I would go see him do just about anything. He's an incredible human and musician. Um, the Al Hurt tribute is going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, you got Gino De La Foz. And I mean, I want to go see Panorama. I'm also not here Friday, so I don't have to make this decision. I want to see Panorama real bad, but like, after John's set last year, 
think is there anybody like i'm sure you guys are going to go see somebody in this group is going to go see something else but if i was there i sure wouldn't um and i've been blessed to see him so many times here in new york and down there and just like last year's set was so insanely good john baptiste john baptiste yeah. yeah 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 um I will pick up what you, where you left, well, I'll take it back for a minute with the TBC Brass Band. So this caught my eye because I know that they sometimes back up has sizzle. So I wonder if they're going to bounce, no pun intended, over to Conca Square. <laughs> that was so corny. I'm sorry. Um, That's a hard to great. back him up yeah. after, that would be really cool. Um, I want to give a shout out to friend of the thread head Shamar Allen. Oh yes. Always. Yeah. I'm always blown away. Like Shamar is so good with a big crowd. He is so much fun. Um, he's just, he's got this big personality. He's incredibly talented. So much fun at jazz fest. It, it, he's really become like a cannot miss for me um, because he just lifts my spirit. So go see uh, Shamar, maybe go see his sizzle beforehand. I'm not sure. It's a little early in the morning for that, but um, you know, you could have that kind of Friday. Um, and then on the subject of giving flowers while they are living, um, you may want to swing by Faye Dodo to hear the Savoy family Cajun band. Um, mm. Mark and Anne are not getting any younger. Um, you know, their boys have a bunch of other bands that they play with. Um, and they are, you know, they they are the, the el two of the elders um, in Cajun music. So you can catch them there um at 140 and Anne Savoy has her own solo project that caught my eye I believe it's second weekend and it's on the Lanyap stage I don't know a whole lot about it um I'm gonna check it out I know she has an album coming out that I think is um directly correlated to so um whatever sound she's playing around with it's interesting when you see you know elders in a tradition that are really like creating new things and um you know trying new things with their sound um when they could really just like you know kick back their feet and and uh celebrate what they've already done so i plan to support them um uh by checking them out fey dodo um other than that i don't really have anything else that jumps out to me except for this kind of little um gem if you're not familiar with river eckert um, River is a teenager, he's probably 14, 15, uh, piano prodigy in New Orleans who plays like, you know, the traditional piano professor style piano. Um, River is playing the Rhythm Porium Tent to open the day. And then River has a band that's playing the children's tent that afternoon. I don't know who's in this person's band, but I, I don't know if it's their peers or if it's their elders, because it's, their, you know, it's elders, it's not it's peers. elders, it's gotta yeah. be. And if you look at, at River's website and see who River often keeps company with, you'll see some names that are pretty exciting. So um, that's a little little plug to go check out River's website um, and, and listen to their music. Yeah, River, uh, who was kind of my sleeper, as you uh, stole from me, but yeah, his, uh, his father is uh, Jake Eckert, who plays with the suspect. So uh, he's got his father's Rolodex. Uh, he makes all his own calls and puts together his own band. Uh, so, you know, I'm not taking anything away from him, but yeah, he's got some uh, some heavy players with him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been, uh, I probably have to go back to 12 year old Amanda Shaw. Uh, the last time I saw someone in the in the kids' tent who really blew me away. But yeah, I'm looking forward to see what River brings to Jazz Fest for sure. What else do you have, Swag? Uh, what else? Um, over on the Jazz and Heritage stage, Midday is uh, Government Magic. They're uh, a local Afrobeat band that really doesn't seem to play very much anymore. And I haven't seen them in a number of years. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. And then uh, John Batiste, of course, uh, there's another local. That's that's where I imagine I'm going to close. I'm noticing that uh, Louis Michaud has uh, a set in the Rhythm Porium. <coughs> and... You know, of course, he plays with Lost by Ramblers and Misha Melody Makers and, and some other uh, other groups as well. But, you know, since the Rhythm Porium tends to be kind of stripped down acoustic and a lot of bands just play solo, uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, you know, what uh, what he might bring to um, to that tent. And then uh, since they can't, they can't all be locals, I'll, uh, I'm looking forward to the Amy Helm set. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's see that for sure. I'll jump in. I think um, my two must sees that day, and then I have one other comment to make. My two must sees are John Batiste. His show last year was just amazing, so I'm just not going to miss that. 
And then Layla McCalla, who I think is just a wonderful, wonderful talent. Um, she played here last night for her new album release party at the broadside. And um, I, I've listened to her album. It's really good. And so I'm, I'm going to see her at Fader Doe. I think that's at 1220. But the other thing I wanted to mention, especially for first timers to Jazz Fest, is try to go once a day to the Economy Hall tent. It doesn't really matter who you see. It's just so joyful to hear the music in the Economy Hall tent and to watch the people dancing and second lining. It, to me, it's the quintessential New Orleans experience. So you get to the Economy Hall tent. You started to... You know, they're, they're doing something different this year with the Economy Hall tent. They're actually having social aid and pleasure clubs lead parades at designated times, as opposed to, I used to always kind of wander in there and hope for a parade, like, you know, a second line around the around the tent, but they're actually scheduling them this year. So if you really want to catch a second line in the Economy Hall tent, you can look at the bottom of the schedule where it says parades and you can find one, usually. Good suggestion, thanks. You know, you started to say uh, at least once a day, you should you should get over there. And, and I thought you were going to call that the gospel tent. And then it, most of what you said after that applies to the gospel tent, too. It doesn't really matter who you see. Uh, there's a joyousness in there. Watch the audience, uh, how much uh, they're enjoying it. So it's uh, both. Bingo. Of them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm going to extend that one more time, which is to say, for me, that the, the stages that I come for or come back for more than anything else are those two and also jazz and heritage right um and um let's see and you have gospel you have jazz and heritage and you have fado do I, I'll, I'll stop it i'll stop at those three but those three to me are really like that's like the heart and soul of this and economy hall like those four actually sorry so jazz and heritage fado do gospel and economy hall to me that's the like es that's the essence of the place jordan what else do you have for that day before we move on no the first part of the day I, there's a lot of things i want to see but nothing that like i have to see so i'll probably do some craft shopping like don't forget there's a world renowned craft show at jazz fest where you can see all kinds of local artists making amazing things so I I uh, usually wander around that on the first or second day. Um, uh, Baklava Blues of Ukraine, Canada. I'll go pay some respects to them. Uh, you know, support Ukraine a little bit, and also hear some fun music. Um, Mr. Sip, who I've seen a couple times at Jazz Fest. He's he's the Mississippi Blues child, the Blues Ten at Three. Mm. Um, he has so much energy and is like he's like a walking smile. Um, the head scratcher for me of the entire jazz fest is what are they doing putting Gino Delafos in the blues tent? Mm -hmm. He's my favorite guy to go act to dance to and it, in a place where they don't allow dancing. So I don't even know what's going to happen there. It just, I have no yeah. idea why they did that. Sam, that's they, actually one of the reasons I didn't name him. No, just that's one of the reasons I didn't throw out his set. Not because he's not amazing, but because it's like, oh, the blues tent? Yeah. How are you going to decide to go to, in the blues tent? Um, the Revivalists are my kids' favorite, um, so I'll, we'll go see them. Um, I'm definitely going to catch um, the interview with Monk Boudreau and uh, Mardi Gras Indians. It's just such an interesting topic for me. It's an only New Orleans thing. And I don't think I've ever regretted going to an interview. I used to always think, why would people go to interviews? Like, you could see all this music, but they usually sing some of the interviews. You you hear really interesting stuff. I've never regretted the time I've spent at the Allison Minor stage in the grandstand in the interview. Absolutely. And I will finish with, with John Batiste as well. Um, one last one. Go ahead. Go ahead. One last one is, uh, I don't know how even how to say this one, but Umu Sangre of Mali also sounded cool to me. That's like a more of like a hip hop sound, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just going to say that I'm probably the only person who doesn't plan to finish at John Baptiste. I'll probably be there for a little bit, but um, I liked the set last year, but I'm, I'm cool with taking a break from it. And I will probably um, end my day with either Lost by Ramblers or Panorama Jazz Band. Who knows, though? I don't feel strongly about anything. <laughs> I mean, and, I'm not hard to believe. and what, what's the one food you're going to have on that Friday? 
the snack that I bring in now that you're officially, officially allowed to bring your own personal snacks in. I'm going to go back to Crawford's bread, which had, which took a vacation last year. So I'm going to have a, I don't know if it's the Crawford's bread or the sausage and jalapeno bread, but I'll have one of those. I think, I think Vokersan sausage is going to be my choice. Anyone else? I like the meaty white beans. Mm, yeah. The barbecue, barbecue tent. Yeah. I am, I will, I imagine I will be putting down a significant number of frozen cafe au lait. So <laughs> that feels like a safe bet just to name to throw out. All right. Are we on to uh, Saturday the 27th? We are. We're making progress. Who's jumping in? I have a lot. I'll, I'll go. I mean, go. one thing I definitely want to see is the jazz funeral for Russell Batiste. Yeah. Which um, there'll be a little parade. You'll follow that parade to the statues. And then where they'll, un I guess he gets a statue. Is that right? Um, they'll un unveil a statue of him. And usually friends and family will make a couple of speeches and play a little bit right by the statues. It's just a really moving thing. Um, and he was a force, a drumming force in New Orleans. He changed drumming in New Orleans. Um, so I'll go see that. I, I hope to also see his, the, the set of his um, his brother's tribute to him, but at Congo Square at one thirty. But um, that's up against uh, Dave Jordan and Boyfriend, which are both really fun. Um, so I might, I'll definitely make the parade. I might not make the others. Um, Dahlia Vol um, has been a blues person who um, I've always liked, um, and I'll check her out. Um, Alex McMurray Band and Motel Radio are up against each other, but I think uh, if you refer, if you rewind about five minutes and go back to Chris's mm -hmm. comments, I will see Alex McMurray anytime, anywhere, for as much for the banter as the music, musicianship and the uh, songs. Uh, yeah, Ninth War Chickens is one of my favorite songs ever. And the Lanyap stage, those are my people. So they're like, that's if I had to like pick one stage, that would be my stage. All right. Um, I'm going to, things I've never heard of before, I'll check out Clay Parker and Jody uh, James if I can. Delwyn Birchwood, I've never seen. I'd love to see what Hooray for the Riff Raff is up to right now. Um, Midnight Disturbers is a set that I will at least catch some of every year. It's an all star band of, of uh, people in other, of like Jazz Fest luminaries from people in other bands. So it only gets together really at Jazz Fest in special times. Lynn Drury at the Lanyap stage, love her uh, singer songwriter uh, stuff. And then I will finish the day walking around among Chris Stapleton, Vampire Weekend, and Robert Gray, maybe even stopping by Nicholas Payton. So my, my picks are really. Um have already been mentioned pretty much by you, Jordan. I, um, my, my, my crew at Jazz Fest won't miss an Alex McMurray band set. It's not possible. So, uh, that we, we clear the, we clear the conflicts for that one. Um, we also love Midnight Disturbers. I always like, I just want a cold beer and Midnight Disturbers and dancing my ass off. That's what I want. That's what I'm envisioning for Saturday, April 27th. Um, Lynn Drury, if you aren't familiar with Lynn, is, uh, as Jordan mentioned, a incredibly talented and, and experienced, you know, singer-songwriter located in New Orleans. Um, Lynn took a nasty spill in the fall of last year and was yeah. unable, uh, she broke her shoulder, which really sucks if you're a professional guitar player. Um, so she had a little bit of, um, you know, a time over the winter, but she's back. She's back to performing. She has an outstanding new album that's out. So I think that uh, if you're able to spin by Lanny Up stage for her closing set, uh, please do. Um, she always has a wonderful band also. And then um, I would like to see Boyfriend because that's always like a wild jazz fest show. And then two other little things I wanted to mention. Um the interview stage this day is absolutely outstanding. I mean, you, you've got some pretty big, like global talent on the um, the music stage on the interview stage that day. You have an interview with Molly Tuttle. You have an interview with Charles Lloyd. 
you have this really interesting sounding interview with uh, members of the Hot 8 Brass Band and Rancho Aparte, which is one of those Colombian artists, and they are an absolute party band. Um, they are super fun. Um, and then Boyfriend, and then another Colombian band following that. So if you're like me, and once in a while, you're like, I just need to park it at the interview stage and chill out, this is probably a nice um, day to do that. And then I don't have a lot of like the big name acts that I'm like super stoked for. And I don't even know if I'd say I'm super stoked for them, but I, I'm. it's going to be hard for me to resist the pull of Vampire Weekend just because I was a college student in the early 2000s and stuff. And that's when they were out. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be really, and their new album is great. I just listened to it. It's really, really right. nice. So um, that is going to be one that I'm totally willing to, um, to get excited for. I'm going to sneak in here because you pointed out something I was thinking about for folks who don't know that 2.30 interview that Nicole just shouted out. I'm going to butcher his name, but the, the guy who's doing the interview, Matt Sakakini, um, has a really incredible book uh, that he wrote on the sort of the the like state of brass bands and brass bands in, in during you know pre during and post Katrina called Roll with It, which I strongly encourage. If that's something, if that kind of history and like ethnomusicography kind of stuff is something that's interesting to you, definitely a book worth checking out. Um, this is to me, this is a bit of a day of icons. I think like I think of people that are like these are the reasons that like I make sure I try to get back every year. Um, so you've got the Treme Brass Band in Economy Hall. And I know we were all just saying there are a few stages that you should just get there whenever you can. Um, and there will be something amazing that you'll experience. And that is true. But also go see the Treme Brass Band if you're going to catch one set at Economy Hall. Uh, and I say this looking at Dr. Michael White happening right after them. He is also amazing. But like if if I had to pick one in Economy Hall, I would do the Treme Brass Bands. Um, that Batiste Brothers tribute to Russell. Uh, it's a there's there's so much happening in that time slot, too. In addition to Boyfriend, you got Jason Marsalis in the jazz tent, James Andrews um, doing his, you know, doing his thing in the blues tent, Dr. Michael White. Bruce Dingpot, there's like a whole, there's a whole bunch of incredible stuff in that slot. That's going to drive me nuts. But then as, as, as much as I love Alex and I will be sure to try to catch some of them, you've got Deacon John, even though he's in the blues tent, you've got Deacon John. Like Deacon John is a incredibly important to me anyway, a musician in terms of the, like the, the sort of New Orleans realm and uh, just incredible singer, performer, guitarist, just incredible to catch. Um, I do love Alex, and I will try to catch some of Mr. You know, Mr. Tuesday Night as well. Um, and then you've got this really tough spot from 4 to 5.30 because you've got, I know I just said the thing about Treme Brass Band, but you've got Don Vappi, who is like a giant in terms of Creole jazz banjo, also an amazing bass player and singer. Um, you got the you got Buckwheat Zydeco Jr., uh, and the Il Salpati yeah. band by the Buckwheat Zydeco is one of the reasons I started coming to Jazz Fest. His dad, um, who's an incredible, uh, incredible man on the accordion and on the vocals. You have the Midnight Disturbers, and you have in the gospel tent Miss Irma Thomas doing a set that always, always makes me cry. And I always make it my duty to go see her. And I remember bringing a tiny, and not so tiny, but still much tinier than he is now, Elijah, over there to catch her. Um, and I would, I'm going to close with, uh, with uh, Mr. Black American Music, Mr. Nicholas Payton in the Nth Power in the Jazz Tent. I think that's going to be amazing. I've gotten to see him play so many different kinds of sets over the years. Um, and I think having him, you know, and Nigel and those guys together, like, I think that's going to be something special. Hey, Russ, that uh, gospel uh, Irma Thomas said, I've, uh, I, mean, I saw one of the, one or two of those in, in the early days and they just stopped going because the, it seemed like the gospel tent was just so crowded and you had to get there two hours before if you want is it is it still that bad um yes <laughs> yes i mean we've lucked out we've been able to like if you go in on the side you're able to maybe steal a seat or two you know and i have you know i can i can i can play up on people's sympathies because i have a small child who also wants to get in uh he's not so small anymore so that may not work um, but no, it's still packed and it's, I've found it worth it, but I would also understand being like over the crowds when there's so much other amazing stuff happening, even directly in that time slot on Saturday. 
Yeah, Swag, the only way I've been able to accomplish it is the second half when some people have left. Like you can often get into crowded sets for the second half. But the second half is Midnight Disturbers, Sullivan Birchwood, and everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'll jump in, um, and I'm going to go backwards, I think. I want to give a second to what Nicole said. That as much as I hate to agree with Nicole, um, sometimes I do. And the Lynn, Lynn Drury has put out a great new album. It just came out a few days ago, and I, I've just been listening to the shit out of it. It's so good. And she's had other great albums in the past, so I would highly, highly, highly recommend that set. She's closing the Lanyap stage that day. Uh a shout out for the Creole String Beans who were playing early at the Fado No mm. stage. Swamp Pop, they're fun. You can dance. They have some great tunes. They do some covers. Um, Vampire Weekend, I'm looking forward to seeing. I have not listened to their new album yet, but I'm I'm hearing some great things about it. Um and the last one I wanted to bring up, but I don't know, you know, because we can't play in two places at once. I'm a huge Robert Cray fan. Huge Robert Cray fan. He's really good. Always puts on a good show. I just don't know how to be in two places at once. So that's a problem. <laughs> and, you know, I know we try not to uh, scope lead on this too much by like getting into nighttime shows, but I I do want to point this one out because um, it, it probably doesn't cross many people's um, possibilities. Lynn Drury does a regular gig on Wednesday night. She calls it Lynn's Day. It's at a little... Um, like courtyard bar in the French Quarter called MRB. It's a all you got to do is bring some tip money. Otherwise, it's free, so you don't need to like you know go to Ticketmaster and pay a gazillion dollars or anything like that. Um, there's good food in the courtyard. Lynn is incredibly charming. Um, it's a great show, so you can eat, you can chill out, you can tip Lynn. Um, so I'm mentioning that because I know that she's up against a lot of other heavy hitters. And if you're looking for something to do uh, Wednesday, just double check and make sure it's going on. But she's there most Wednesday nights. And she's yeah. got some other shows during Jazz Fest, too. She probably does, yeah. yeah. All right. So for me, I'm looking uh, you know, for the out-of-towner uh, headliner uh, this day and i'm looking forward to seeing molly tuttle uh, especially out on the big stage and i hope the the chris stapleton crowd is uh, reasonable and appreciative um on the local set side um uh, early in the day in the blues tent uh, sierra green and the giants i don't know if this is a new band for her or just a, a new name for her for her old band uh, but they played uh, wednesday at the square a few weeks ago and i was i was really impressed with her voice and with the overall sound of that um, and early in the day, the blues tent uh, tends to be pretty reasonable. I don't think it'll be crazy crowded or unmanageable, and there should be dancing room in the back if if you're so inclined. I um, also want to mention uh, end of the day at Jazz and Heritage uh, after a midnight disturber is Flagboy Giz. Um, he's been playing a bunch lately. He's kind of uh, um, he's, he's a young guy who's blending Mardi Gras Indian music with hip hop. So it's a, it's a different kind of sound uh, for Mardi Gras Indian music and uh, it gets uh, the swag uh, thumbs up recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> one other one that if people are there early and they have, there's a couple new bands that I ha I don't know, maybe you don't know, Swag or Chris. People Museum and Minus the Saint um, are two bands that are like minus the same i wrote up i listened to them and they and i wrote them as a southern louisiana or folk southern, southern louisiana folk rock that takes chances um mm -hmm. so i like bands that take chances and i'll probably give them a listen because you know early in the day what's not to like about the lanyard stage in the paddock <laughs> shade chairs it's got it all yeah <laughs> but it doesn't have food this year no, no food. They have beer. That's from ice enough. cream sandwiches. No beer food? Is food. At Lanyap stage, there's no longer a food booth there. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, they the oysters went away last year, uh, and they were still selling the crawfish rolls. But the crawfish roll vendor, who was also the the vendor that used to do the boiled crawfish, is gone. And so yeah, nothing, nothing in Lanyap. Well, speaking of food, what food are you picking Saturday? Well, uh, it's probably time for a Kashan delay. 
I was going to say, it's probably time for crawfish bread because I'm so happy they're back because that's like the best thing to just pick up and throw in your bag. And then you sit down and you surprise your crew with, you know, portable food. I'm going to try that. I'll do the brown jambalaya. Russ? Well, uh, Benachin is back. I'm probably pronouncing, mispronouncing that that spot's name. Um, but they've got they've got the, the the chicken and the jamma jamma and the you know they probably rock out to some of that. Also, probably bring some Passover friendly food from home because we're flying in and landing at like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm going with swag, Kashan Delay. Nice. Go early because there'll be a line late. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I mean, that is a trick, by, by the way. For the foods that are really popular, mm -hmm. don't wait in line. Go a different time when they're not so, not such a big line. Or you could do, you know, what, what us really hungry people do and get something you like that's not that popular and then eat it while you're waiting in the line for the other <laughs> thing. Okay. <laughs> I have absolutely done that. I'd not regretted it once. Does that count as like a hack? <laughs> sure. <laughs> or permission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. No, but like there are some amazing, there's a lot of amazing food that mm -hmm. we're not shout, necessarily shouting out. And like like the, 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 the four or five stages we gave some extra love to, like chances are that thing next to the booth that has the line that's all the way back to the cultural pavilion, the place next to it also has really good shit. So... Sorry, Eat stuff. I don't, know if we're, I don't mean to mess up our PG-13 rating. No, it's fine. I think I said ass earlier, so it's already done. Uh, we're in the home stretch, guys. Sunday, April 28th. Who's going for it? Cole, I think you should go first. Well, see, the thing is, is about this day for me is that I have, this will be like a grazing most of the day will be grazing for me. There's certainly um, favorites that are options. I love the Oscar Rossignoli content, Quintet. That's a definite possibility. I may not be in the mood for the jazz tent though. Um, our friend Mark Stone has two um, appearances on Sunday. He's opening the blues tent and then he'll be in the Rhythm Porium tent later that afternoon at 2.20. Um, I will actually, the jazz tent might work because after Oscar's quintent is the uh, Louis Armstrong Camp 30th anniversary band featuring Big Chief Donald Harrison, Wyclef Gordon, Devel Crawford, and the Jazz Camp All-Star Alumni. It's really small print. Um, so I had to zoom in. Um, and I think that's going to be a uh, can't miss. So I will just jump ahead to the end of the day. I have... Um, a minor conflict that's really goofy. I really want to see a little bit of heart. <laughs> I think it's going to rip. So I want to see a little bit of heart. And um, I, but I really want to see Juvenile with Manny Fresh. Um, I think that's going to be the exciting energy I need to end the first weekend of Jazz Fest. Prior to heart, Tammy Nielsen is on Gentilly. Um, if you're not familiar with Tammy, she is a, she's, she's interesting. She's got this big voice and she does, kind of country and soul music a, a bit equally. Um, and she has a really killer band. I would normally expect to see her at like a festival, like like Americana Fest. So I'm kind of interested to see her on this, um, on, on the lineup for Sunday. I, I'm looking forward to that. The FOM, the fear missing out issue there is Bela Fleck, my bluegrass heart. I have a feeling Fado Dodo is gonna be a little bit of a mess for that. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> um, so I have my my exit plan. Would love to be there for for part of Bela Fleck, um, but if I'm unable to, Tammy Nielsen is not a uh, a second place prize at all. Yeah, I'm uh, hoping for Bela as well. But uh, you know, if not, uh, the next cube over is uh, Big Chief Monk Boudreau, and mm -hmm. you can never go wrong with with him. Uh, I'm also looking at uh, I'm looking at Bone Bone Vivant that day. I'm looking at uh, the Almond Bets uh, probably to close, except we'll see how crowded that gets. Um, and then uh, where did it go? Uh, oh, Eric Lindell. Who, uh, I'm not even sure if he's local anymore, but he uh, he's still regarded as a local, but doesn't play much. Um, so I'd like to. I'd like to see his set that day. 
Jordan, what you got? So uh, this one, I thought I would just give you like I see, like like I mention a lot of bands, and it's not just because I like them all. I actually usually go see them all. Mm -hmm. So like I'll see twenty bands or twenty three bands a a day at Jazz Fest by grazing a little bit and walking around. So on this one, I'll just give you an idea of what my day would look like just to give people another sense of how the world works. I'll see the first two songs of Mark Stone, then the first half of Rose of the Day's set at, at the uh, Fado Do stage, then the second half, uh, and then the, uh, I'm sorry, the first half of the Serotone set and the second half of Rose of the Day's set, then the first half of Leo, Jones, uh, Leo Jackson, the Melody Clouds and the Gospel Tent, mm. and the last half of Jontavius Willis, the first two songs of the Cooley Family Gospel Singers, the first half of Sean Willis. I'll walk past Greg Stafford and his young Tuxedo Brash Band just to like pass through the tent as I'm going somewhere else. Probably catch two songs of Helen Jolay, walk past the Iguanas, the last half of Bon Bon Vivant, or Bon Bon Vivant, the last half of Eric Lindell, the first half of Silver Synthetic, the last two songs of Trumpet Mafia, Michael Franti, the first half of his set, who is like, will guarantee put a smile on your face. The last two songs of the Anointed Jackson Sisters. The last half of Toronto Cannon. The last two songs of Tammy Nielsen. The last two songs of Bella Fleck. I'll walk past Big Chief Monk Boudreau <laughs> and, and Combalisa Mia of Columbia. The first two songs of Joy Clark. The middle two songs of Anderson Pack. And I'll finish with Heart. So I, I, I have to ask you, when do you go to the bathroom? So only if I'm passing a bathroom that has no line. It takes me about 10 seconds. <laughs> I have to be honest, Jordan, that advice was like some of the most sage advice I've been given because now like I do that all the time. Like if I'm passing like I like a porta potty that I know is not bad and there's no one there, I'm like, I'm going. Jordan said that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and, and Nicole, I don't think Hart will be cringy. I think she they can still sing. Like she's still got a great voice. And I think it'll be great. There's usually one band, maybe in both weekends, an, an old timer band that I want to see. And Heart is it for first weekend. <laughs> I I saw them in the '70s when they came out, and they were good then. And I didn't even know they were still a group. So I'm definitely going to see at least part of part of Heart. Michael Franti, yeah, Jordan, you're right. They they are just fun, just a fun fun band, especially yeah. at a festival in a festival setting. Um, I, I might do Jordan, what you said you do on Thursday, which is go visit the crafts. Sunday might be my crafts, crafts visiting day. I, I actually don't have a lot of things circled, although Helen Jolay and the iguanas are both, both on my list to see that, that day. Well, um, I haven't planned my 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 uh, walking strategy, but I I like to you know uh, give, give some cabo to Jordan, give some honor to Jordan, and say that that's a, that is often how I also try to plan my day, um, and to uh, to like try to figure out which spot, like which twenty minutes of what I'm going to get, and when what sets the, will I ignore that and just park. Um, I've heard a lot of stuff. You guys are seeing that I want to see. I'm going to shout out a couple of other folks that I may try to figure out how to fit in. Gerald French and the original Tuxedo Jazz Band. They're phenomenal. He's a great drummer, such a great presence in the old style. Uh, right up against Fii and the Mandinka Warriors, who always throw a high energy Mardi Gras Indian set. Um, I'm a little annoyed about what I'm going to do from you know the 1:30 to 3 o'clock area because you've got Helen. You've got the pinstripers, you've got the iguanas, you've got Greg Stafford, you got the Louis Armstrong Camp 30th Anniversary Band. I think, in addition to those folks listed, I believe uh, New Orleanian term New Yorker Calvin Johnson is also, I believe, a part of that set. He's amazing, too. I want to give him some love. And, of course, the originators, the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. Um, so that's that's a bit of a <laughs> – not, not sure how I'm going to manage all of that. Um, obviously I want to catch Trumpet Mafia. There's some great stuff happening with those guys as well. Um I am having a problem with Monk, Bella, and Wendell Brunius all up against one another and the Jackson sisters. They're a tremendous gospel group. 
Um, but I'm actually not feeling a ton of, um, I'm not feeling a ton of, of what I'm going to, you know, of concern about FOMO or foams or foam, or whatever you want to call it at the end, I might catch some of Jubital and Manny Fresh because I feel like I'm in New Orleans, but Anderson Pac is just, he's an incredible performer. He's always got a great band with him. Um, you probably have Maurice Brown um, come out on trumpet. Like he's usually, he's usually there with him. Um, it's just, he's got an incredible, incredible, incredible group. And he's an amazing singer and, and MC and drummer. Um, and just great way to close out the day. I think that wraps it up for Sunday. Anybody else? Did I miss anyone? Well, we haven't There's eaten yet. yet. Oh, we haven't oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. There's one caveat is that that is that would be my plan, what I kind of laid out. But that ends up being about 40% accurate when it comes down to the actual day. God knows what happens. You know, you hear something like you, you say only stay for the first half. But my other rule is never leave a great set for potentially a potentially great set. So if I'm loving it, I'm sticking and I'm just missing whatever I'm missing. Yeah. you got to do it that way because otherwise you'll drive yourself cra a little crazy, which we all a little are. But yeah. Oh, <laughs> I realize. I have the color spreadsheets to prove it. <laughs> I have like I have like printed grids that have melted from the sweat in my pocket, but they're stained with highlighter colors for sure. Um, so I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to break this up into we're just going to upload it as two episodes just so that if you're not a week two person, you don't have to or week one, you know, you can go to the week that you want. Um, so, but we're just going to hang out and continue recording. We're going to take a break. So, um, we hope that this was helpful. If you're not tuning into week two, um, I hope that this was a useful guide that maybe we drew your attention to some acts that you weren't familiar with or reminded you of some old favorites. Um, I know like the whole time that we do this, I'm like taking notes, like, oh, I didn't notice that Gerald French is on Sunday, you know? Um, so I hope that it was beneficial for everyone else too. Um, we'll have more in our week two. And I want to make sure in our week two, we save like three minutes for tips for first timers. So if you're a first timer who's week one, you might still want to listen to week two so that we can have um, our first timer tips. And Nicole, I have one other, one last thing, which is just that I do all these Excel spreadsheets with, you know, who like a description of each band mm -hmm. and bigger for bigger format grids for people who can't see the little print and um, my night show recommendations, like what I'm going to see. If people want copies of those, I I'm happy to share them. So just email me at jhamowee at gmail.com and I'll email those spreadsheets out to you so you can play with them how you like. Yo, you want those uh, spreadsheets. You want them. <laughs> it's it's H-A-M-O-W-Y. <laughs> Good, right. I'm, I'm gonna hit pause. Yep. Okay.